In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Supabase's authentication system with SolidJS and Solid Start. There's a few things that you're going to need to get started. First thing would be Node.js. You go to nodejs.org. There should be a download for that right here, and we're going to use the long-term support version of Node. You can see over here we can check for our version, and we can also check for the second thing you're going to need, which is installed with Node. It's called npm like that. Finally, we're going to need to configure Supabase and we're going to need to use the Solid Start framework. All right, so let's get started configuring our Supabase project here. I go ahead and start a new project for me. We'll ask you to log in. I'll be logging in with GitHub and you're welcome to log in with whichever method you prefer. I like GitHub for all of my development related stuff if it's an option. You can see I already have a project here. We're going to ignore that project. Create a new project with this button. Create a new organization. I'm going to name it Tutorials. This is a educational, but uh, for you, you probably set it with personal. All right, it's going to ask you to create a project under your new organization. For this, I'm just going to call it Salt Start. Go ahead and generate a password for this and I will store that. And our pricing plan is obviously going to be the free version. No need to spend any money to get this off the ground. You will click create new project. Okay, once you have your project set up, go ahead down to the project settings and to the API section. And here we are gonna have some important information that we need for later. And so I'm gonna go ahead and store this information in a notepad. The project URL, we will need that. And the project anonymous public API key, we will also need that. These are going to be your environment variables when we configure the Supabase client later on. Now that we have our environment variables saved, you can always find them again if you forget where they are in the project settings under the API section. We will now configure our Supabase project's authentication service. And there's a couple of things we're going to want to change. See over here on the left, there's the authentication button. Now we want to go into our providers. Only one that's enabled right now is email, and that's fine. That's all we're going to go over today. Untick this confirm email if this is on. So you see when it's off, it'll be a little bit grayed out. This is on, this is off. We want to do this so that while you're testing your application, you don't have to constantly check your email each time you're making a new account. We're going to go ahead and save that. And that should be everything we have to do with Supabase. So we need to actually create a project to use the Supabase client with. And for that, we will be using Solid Start. Solid Start is sort of an analog to something like Next.js or SvelteKit, but for the SolidJS ecosystem. And you can see here we have our project setup guide. You can find this if you simply search for Solid Start on Google. You'll find this documentation pretty quickly. All I've done here is I've clicked on Project Setup. Now we are going to change directories. And I'm going to make a new directory, just like it says here. Make a new directory, solid, start, auth. And we are going to go into that directory. And now we are going to run npm init solid at latest. And this will scaffold your solid start project. We're going to say yes. And here we are. You can pick a bunch of different templates. I am not going to be picking any of these. I'm going to be picking just the bare solid start template. Uh, we do not want server-side rendering. The method that we're using for authentication will not work with server-side rendering. If you intend to use server-side rendering, uh, this method likely will not function for you. Uh, I will say yes to using TypeScript, although it's pretty easy to follow the tutorial with uh, just JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to do is, like it says, we're going to npm install. That will install all the packages that uh, Solid Start has provisioned for us in our package.json. Uh, and now we will take a look at the file directory here. This is our file directory. It starts us with a git ignore. That's nice. Uh, we have not initialized a git repository, and I don't intend to. If you'd like to do that, there are plenty of videos on the internet showing how to use git. We have a node modules folder. That's where all of our node.js libraries will live. Obviously, package lock and package json, tsconfig and vite.config.ts are all configuration files related to our environment. Public is where Solid Start stores public assets such as our favicon or any images or potentially videos. And then the source directory is where all of our code will go. And just like Next.js, Solid Start uses file-based routing. You can see that we have a source slash routes folder. So if I go to that and I list what's in there, we have an index, 
then we have a 404. Now, if I do npm run dev, this should start our solid start app on localhost 3000. So I'll come over here. Here we are. This is our solid start app. It provisions us a simple little thing. Uh, when we try to go to about, it says page not found. And this makes sense because if you recall, when we looked at our routes, we only had a 404 route and an index route. The index route will always match the base URL of your website. And here's a little example of SolidJS's reactivity. So now that we have our application working, we can begin integrating Supabase's authentication system. And to do that, we need to install the Supabase JS package through NPM. Okay, I've opened the Supabase docs over here on the right. You can see it's on supabase.com slash docs. I find that the Supabase docs can be kind of confusing and difficult to navigate, but I'll show you where we can go to get the relevant stuff for us. So we're going to scroll down. Your first instinct might be to click on auth, but we're going to keep going. We're going to click on the JavaScript client library. And here we are. And we can install this as a package. And so we are going to do that. npm install at supabase slash supabase dash js. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code in this directory. And here we are in our video code. I'm going to go to source. And in here, we're going to make a new file or even a new folder. Let's call this Supabase. And in Supabase, we're going to make a new file called client.ps. We're going to go ahead and import from Supabase. Just like that. And now that the, that import is set up, you see GitHub Copilot is already suggesting some stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and ignore those suggestions for now. We're going to say const. And here we will be importing our environment variables and using those. Now we're using Vite, so Vite has its own system. We don't need to install .env or any of that stuff. Now these environment variables don't exist yet. We'll be creating them. Then, of course, we are going to export that. And right here, we have a little bit of a TypeScript error here. I'm just going to use the quick fix to update the import from Supabase to import that type. And so now we have this nice little client that we can export to the rest of our application. But it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because we haven't set up the environment variable. So in the root directory, outside of source, I'm going to make a new folder, not a new folder, a new file. I'm going to call this .env. And we have two variables that we're going to define here. And if you recall, we saved these in a notepad. And then we save that. And now Vite can access these environment variables and uh, include them. And the reason that this is important is because these environment variables, well, in this case, it's not as much of a concern because technically these are designed for public use. Sometimes you will have a private key or something that you do not want leaked to GitHub repo or the internet at large. And so you'll store your environment variables in an environment file like this that is not checked into git if you commit with your environment variables in your git repo they will be in the history forever and a bad actor can sleuth through your git history and pull out those environment variables now that we have our client set up we can actually start to use that client and we are going to use that client in fact we are going to create a new component and we're going to call it sign up tsx and the tsx extension is for jsx components have some snippets installed. You can find these SolidJS snippets right here. Install that. Get a couple of useful snippets that allows you to get up and going pretty quick. We don't need this. So here we have a div. We're going to actually turn this into a sign-in form. And we have a little bit of state that we're going to want to manage in this. So create, create a signal for the email. Create a signal for the password. We do not need an error signal. We do need to create a function for handling uh, our inputs. There. Now, when we create an HTML form, we can pass these to its on change attribute and it will set this state automatically so that we can send this information to Superbase. Finally, we're going to have to have a button, and that button is going to submit our information to Superbase. So let's go ahead and... And in here, we want to prevent the default behavior of submitting the button, because we don't want any redirects or anything. This will just dis disable all the default behavior of your browser, and we will only handle the behavior that we specifically set in a try block here. And actually, this is going to be an async function. In a try block here, Make our connection to the Supabase client. 
and this takes an object and this object has some options in it but the main thing that matters is our email and our password now we do have some red squigglies here this is again because we did not uh, import superbase it already detects that we have a superbase client under our superbase client file make sure that your import looks like this now if there's an error all right so we're going to go ahead and start working on our element to return and we'll let copilot write just a bit of this uh So now when we import this signup component elsewhere in our project, oh, we uh, accidentally capital, capitalize the S up here. There we go. When we import this signup component in the rest of our project, we can use it to sign up a new account to our Superbase project. So I'm going to go to index, which we can find under source, routes, index, or all right, and on our index, we have all this lovely stuff that uh, we don't really need. I'll go ahead and just destroy everything in this paragraph tag, and we will go ahead and put our sign up component here. We're going to quick fix this, add the import, adds the sign up import from our sign up. Okay, and we've swapped back over to our command line here, where we are going to run our project. So npm run dev localhost uh, 3000, not 8000. And here's our project. And here's our sign up component, as you can see. And if everything is functioning correctly, when we put in a valid email and password combination and click this sign up button, it will send that information to Superbase. It will create a user account in the database. So let's give that a shot. Let's call this test at test.com. And the password requires six or more characters. I'm just going to say test, test. Now you'll notice nothing happened here, but that's because we didn't make any logic for something to happen once we've signed up, right? If we hit F12 to open our DevTools here, and in here we have our application, and there we go. There's our session stored in local storage, where it belongs. So now if we go back to Superbase, we should see, so we're going to go to Auth, we're going to go over here left to Authentications, click on Users. So these users are successfully being created in our database. And the session is being stored in local storage so that we can access that session. So now that we've signed up and we've logged in, because sign up also logs you in, how about signing out? So let's create a quick component that signs the user out. So pretty much all we're going to have to do here is handle click. So I'm going to say function. It can grab the session from our browser if we're signed in. And then we'll go ahead and turn this return into a button. And of course, let's not forget to uh, prevent default on that event. Almost forgot that part. And this is an async function, of course. Now we have a button. When we click that button, we'll sign out. So let's say sign out. All right. So we'll go back to our index and we'll go ahead and stick that right here. And we get an error. We get an error because we import our new component. Force a refresh. There we go. Now, if we click the sign out button, you'll know if I go to local storage and I click sign out, boom, there goes our session. Now, you might think, okay, well, we can register and we can sign out, but how do we log in? And that's pretty simple because all we have to do is take all this code that we already wrote for signing up. And uh, this isn't how I would typically suggest that you do it. But we're going to just make a new component called signin.tsx. We're going to paste all of that in there, and we are going to rename some stuff. Sign in, sign in. We're going to change the button to sign in. And we already have all the logic we need to handle the email and password. So the main thing that we need to change is here in this handle submit function. So we don't want to sign up. We actually want to sign in with a password. Because Superbase supports multiple different sign in methods. And just like that, we don't really have to do anything extra. We're good to go. That'll sign you in. All we have to do is import this component. It appears I made a mistake with the sign out component to await superbase.auth.signout. And then in the index, we'll go ahead and do the sign in. Boom. So, and we fix this to import and refresh this page. All right. I forgot to change the H1 on this component. So let's sign in. Boom. Just like that. Now we have our test at test.com account. Test 
test as a password. Hit F12. If nothing in our session, I click sign in. There's our session. Stored in local storage, just like that. You might say, well, if I want to get some information about the user, how would I do that? Like, let's say we want to display their user. Pretty simple. Uh, we are going to create a quick signal. We're going to add the import. And then we want to do something when this uh, component mounts. So what we're going to do is we're going to say on mount. And we want to set the username. And if I go ahead and I say username, like so, we change this to guy. Oh, <laughs> I put it in the title. And we save. So we'll now say hello guy. So what we need to do is we need to make a call to Supabase's git session here. And we are going to go ahead and do that here. And now you'll know on the right that we've already changed to saying hello test at test.com. Sign out should say guy. We'll find out. Here we go. Hello guy. Exactly what we're looking for. And we sign in. And we'll sign into test1.com or our test1 account. Just test. Um, and the password will test. Test. And there we are. Hello test1 at test.com. Just like that. And there you go. We are able to get our session. We're able to get information about our session. We're able to sign up. We're able to sign in. We're able to sign out. And that is the basic way to use auth with Solid Start and Solid JS from Superbase Auth.